So in this video, we're going to continue to discuss the discriminant, and we're really going to ask the question of how exactly do we arrive at these conclusions? So how do we know that when my discriminant is greater than zero, I have two distinct real solutions, or when it is equal to zero, I have one repeated real solution, or when it is less than zero, I have no real solutions. How do we know these things? And what exactly does the quadratic formula have to do with it all? Because, because we know that our discriminant resides within the square root of our quadratic formula. So if you're interested in all these questions, this is going to be the video for you. So let's scroll down now and look at a question and hopefully we can come to an answer for this question. So we have x squared minus 4x plus 3. Now if we needed to find the x-intercepts for this, we could go about it in two ways. We could use the quadratic formula, but a far easier way to go about it would be simply to uh, factorize it, in which case we would get x minus 3 and x minus 1 and then it's quite obvious that our intercepts are going to be 1 and 3. I could then come to my graph and label it and then just do an ever so quick sketch of it which will look like this and there would go. We've sketched it, we've found our intercepts. Another way we could go about it as I said before was to use our quadratic formula. And we're actually going to do this now simply to understand the discriminant a bit more. So when we use our quadratic formula, the first thing that we do is identify our a, b, and c value. So my a value will be 1, my b value will be negative 4, and my c value will be 3. But before I plug them into my formula, I actually want to represent my formula in a different way. I'm going to represent it as this. Now, hopefully you can realize that these two are identical they just look different. So I've simply put my negative, p, negative b and put that over my denominator and then taken this part of the formula and put that over the same denominator. Nothing has changed, it just looks different. So from here, I'm now going to begin putting in all my values. So my b value is negative four over two a, so I'm gonna get four over two plus or minus, I'm just gonna do this quickly, negative four squared is 16 minus 4 times 1 is 4 times 3 is 12 and then 2 times 1 is 2. Then I'm going to continue my working out. I'm going to get 4 over 2 is 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 over 2. So my final answer will be x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 plus or minus 1. So this is going to be my answer of uh, what is my x-intercepts. So what this is telling me is that if I want to find my x-intercepts of this quadratic, what I need to do is go to x equals 2, which is here. Let me put a line in there. It's telling me that I need to go here to x equals 2. It then says to find one of my intercepts, move one in the positive direction, or plus one, move one in the positive direction. So starting at x equals 2, I move 1 in the positive direction, and as you can see, I do in fact arrive at my intercept. Then we go back here, and it also tells me that if I move 1 in the negative direction, I'm also going to find an intercept. So again, I start at x equals 2, and I move 1 in the negative direction, and I do find another x-intercept. So hopefully what you can see here is two components of what my quadratic formula really is. I have two which, as you can see, corresponds to here and here, and then finally to this part, negative b over 2a. And this negative b over 2a is what we call my axis of symmetry. So I could put this in here, negative b over 2a is my axis of symmetry. It's the line that cuts my parabola in half. And what we know is that my x-intercepts are going to be of equal distance away from my axis of symmetry. So in this case, there's going to be a distance of one in either direction from my axis of symmetry to my x-intercepts. So hopefully you can see here what exactly my quadratic formula is. I'm finding the axis of symmetry and then finding how much I need to move in either direction to arrive at my x-intercepts. Let's now move on to another question which is going to make this even clearer. So here we go again. And to find my x-intercepts, I could go about it in two ways, just like before. I could use my quadratic formula, but I could also factorize it. So in this case, I'm going to get x minus 2, 
x minus 2, which will mean that my x-intercept will be at x equals 2. I could come over here and graph it, and as you can see this time, I only get one solution. It's only going to touch my x-axis at one point, so I give it a quick sketch, and this is what it's going to roughly look like. Let's now look at my quadratic formula, and again, as to use my quadratic formula, I need to identify a, b, and c. So in this case, it's going to be 1, negative 4, and 4. I then put in my values to find my x-intercepts. It's going to be 4 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 16 over 2. I then continue with my working. This is going to be 2 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 2, which will finally be x is equal to 2 plus or minus 0 over 2, which of course is just x equals 2 plus or minus 0. So this time, it's telling me the same thing as it was saying before. It's saying go to where x equals 2. So it's giving me my axis of symmetry, which is x equals 2. But now it's telling me, in order to find my x-intercepts, I need to move 0 in my positive direction and 0 in my negative direction. So in other words, it's telling me not to move anywhere at all from my axis of symmetry. It's as if it's, it's, as if it's saying you're already on your x-intercepts. Your axis of symmetry is going to be where your x-intercept lies. And that's exactly what we see. I'm already on my x-intercept. So notice here that I got plus or minus 0 when there was a 0 underneath my square root. That's going to be important when we start talking about my discriminant. Let's now go to our final example. And here we have x squared minus 4x plus 5. This cannot be factorized, so let's immediately go into my quadratic formula and identify what a, b, and c is. My a will be 1, my b will be negative 4, and my c value will be 5. I then put all of these into my equation, so I'm going to get 4 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 20 over 2a. Sorry, that 2a can just be 2. And then I'm going to get x, whoopsie daisy, I'm going to get oh, x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 over 2, which equals x equals 2, and this is where things can start to break down. What is the square root of a negative number? If you type in a square root of a negative number, if you go ahead and write this whole equation into your calculator, what it's going to read is error. Nothing is going to come out. You can't square root a negative number. So in other words, what it's telling us is that there are no x-intercepts. And in fact, if I was to draw this, this is what it's going to look like. As you can see, I don't touch the x-intercept. So therefore, when this is negative 4, when I have a negative inside my square root, the whole thing just breaks down. There are no x-intercepts defined. So let's now reflect on what we've seen so far. So we noted that when we had a positive number underneath my square root, what the outcome was, was I got x equals 2 plus or minus 1 in this case, which allowed me to start at my axis of symmetry and then move a certain amount either right and left to find my intercepts. When I had a 0 underneath my square root, that meant that I need to start at my axis of symmetry, but this time I was to move zero in each direction. So in other words, what it was telling me is don't move anywhere at all. You're already on your x-intercept. And finally, when we had a negative four inside my square root, the whole thing came out as an error undefined. It doesn't work. Or in other words, there are no x-intercepts. And hopefully now you can see the relevance of my quadratic. In, of my discriminant in this case, what my discriminant is. So hopefully that clarifies what we talked about here, that when my discriminant is greater or equal to zero, I'm going to have two distinct real solutions. When it is equal to zero, I'm going to have one repeated solution. And when it is less than zero, there are going to be no solutions. Hopefully all of this makes more sense after going through those three examples. Hopefully this was helpful.